to talk to talk about um, the situations and stuff that's going on. I just want to get your thoughts and your perspectives of where you are, what you think, um, what's going on. Anybody can start. My take on it is uh, that we have to. I think this is leading up to martial law. Mm -hmm. uh, because there has to be complete and utter chaos uh, for martial law to be implemented. Now, what better way to have that than by already having black against white, but not only black against white, but for having. Uh, the people against police, mm -hmm. who we're supposed to depend on to straighten out these things. Um, so when you have things like that happening, um, and that's what's uh, that, that's what can cause chaos when you have riots, when you have police that may be scared of doing their job. Um, so for for the natural eye, I mean it's just chaos, and, and it just looks like chaos. And then martial martial law trying to come in and kind of settle everything out. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, and I was doing. Um, you know, doing a little study room today and, and talked about my thing with the group. Talk about we started to see these things and signs of the world because the joy of the the redemption draws nigh. Mm -hmm. um, so on the spiritual side, that, that awakening is like, okay, this thing may be, you know, we've been here for years that things have come to the end, these things have been happening. But there has been more of a time where these things have been more for. Ready to come in now. So, you know, just looking on that and then just, just getting away from, from certain things. And you can look at it so much from a, from a natural standpoint where you missing everything that you should be expecting and rejoicing in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I can kind of just have everybody say something. That's kind of what I used to do. Just, uh, just have everybody just say something. So, um, anybody else, or do we want to go with that model? And that's what I was going to say. Okay. Because okay. I was about to say, mm -hmm. the stuff that's happening, I think they're paid to do this. Mm -hmm. So they can bring their martial arts. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't pay no, I don't pay no money. It is what it is. I know the Bible said that throw the darkness upon the man. Mm -hmm. Men can be men and love what they say. So I don't fight it. What mm -hmm. happened is just happened. I say, well, if you try to help somebody. I call help is telling my Jesus. Mm -hmm. If they reject it, then they don't want to help. Mm -hmm. If you on the devil's playground and these things gonna happen, mm -hmm. so if you want to pray like that and you live like that, I can't help you no way. He said you're a coward. Not to go fight the police, mm -hmm. but over the enemy. Who is the enemy? Mm -hmm. Any man trying to be friend of the world. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see Jesus, then you are in. That's a good point. Good point. So um, you saying the main objective is uh, the reason that these things are happening is because of uh, the lack of of Jesus. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, if you have somebody on the streets that says that. Even if I have Jesus, I got a cousin that got killed the same way in the same situation, and he had Jesus. What would y'all say to that? Yeah. Well, they overcome even by doing duty. Okay. So if that was to happen, then you still go out and show love. Okay. Okay. That's a good point. That's a good point. Go out and show love uh, regardless. How do we address the problem? Is there a problem in this nation? Yeah, they're taking Jesus out, they're taking God out of everything. Okay. Take my school system, mm -hmm. everywhere else, so you know, things are falling apart. But how do we identify? Because we say God and we say Jesus, but how do we identify the problem of what's going on? Because some people might hear you say, you know, we, and I'm just talking from a perspective of people, not saying I agree or disagree, because I agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Well, if some people are um, saying, okay, we hollering Jesus, we hollering God, but is that doing something to the problem that's going on? And they're saying, how do we address the problem? Is it a way we can identify 
what the problem is. What is the problem? What's prevalent? What would you say? Race is the problem. Racism. Will anybody agree or disagree with that? I would agree with, with people being angry that nothing's really being done. Mm-hmm. About, about. Yeah. 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 So we would say to identify, or let me say this on a spiritual level. Uh, what is the spirit that's prevalent? It, it can get the same answer. But I'm just saying. Anybody can say something. What's the spirit prevalent that's called that's driving these things? Fear, anger. What else? Spirit of deception. Because one thing I noticed, we can easily identify. Homosexuality. And we'll get loud, vocal, boldness. Everybody post. Identifiable. And we say the same thing like my brother said. They need Jesus. But we're not afraid to directly challenge that spirit. Mm -hmm. All right? With the inception of America, that means, you know, I, I know you guys know the beginning of America. Was homosexuality the problem? Mm -hmm. So now this, we're dealing with a spirit then that's been in this land before homosexuality. Because a lot of times we say God going to judge the land because of the homosexuality that's here. Was abortion the problem initially mm -hmm. in America? Rebellion? Yeah, yeah. We can say it started off with rebellion. And we can identify uh, rebellion. But one thing that I notice is hard for people to speak on. It's like we said before. Racism. Help me understand. Why is it a problem? Even as a preacher... Or believe in the most high. Or just churches. Why is there a problem to speak on racism? Because people don't want to offend. So, is there a spirit that causes people to be intimidated to speak against it? But we call it not offended. For a lot of the pastors, um, for, who came for us or you know those in that age group that grew up in that time where racism was really prevalent they had to experience the colored people water fountain you know all the mm -hmm. um, discrimination so I, I feel like for them they feel like they've already come across that hurdle mm -hmm. and, it, and it was a difficult time already for them to come across that and overcome that they probably just don't want to do the fight again if that makes sense. So you'd rather just be like, you know. Yeah. But one thing about that is you cannot want to fight, but the fight going to go on. And it's offensive to speak against homosexuality. It's offensive to speak against women feminism. In the natural and in the church. It's offensive. But we speak with boldness against it. I believe that it's more of like a ruling spirit mm -hmm. in this nation to hate people of color and it's taught even the people of color mm -hmm. in our school system. Mm -hmm. So it is something that is ingrained in if you went to public school, that's in you. Mm -hmm. You somewhere in you you feel like if you are, you know, got color to your skin, somewhere you've been taught you, you know, you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve respect. 
you have to work extra hard to prove to somebody that you know what I am somebody and then sometimes that gets way out of hand but at the end of the day that's something that's really if you went to public school in this country in you just like Miss um, Jane Elliott mm-hmm. you taught racism you are taught to look at your you know your dark skinned brothers and sisters like they somewhere beneath you if you're not dark skinned or whatever then you are taught to look at them as beneath you and if you are dark skinned you taught to look down on yourself all right what if somebody say to that now well you don't got you don't need to worry about that all you need to worry about is jesus you see what i'm saying you don't need to worry about none of that you just need to worry about jesus How would you handle what are they, what are they saying? Because he's like, you see, you, you caught up in the past. You worry about people worrying about you. Jesus is the fix-all for all of it. So that's all you need to worry about. He is the fix-all, but sometimes it's hard for people to separate the fix-all from reality. Mm. And I also think mm. that, you know, when, when that's within you, mm. you won't see that as a problem. So it's something that you feel like, well, Mm-hmm. These girls can get off their behind and they can do better. Mm-hmm. And I, and that's something that it's like you know with one of those pill steps and identifying you have a problem first <laughs> and then their problem is fixed. So one thing I say to that is because a lot of times people say that to just take your mind off that and cut you off. All right. We take our mind off that, but we're going to deal with it on a daily basis. It's going to be there. Why? Because we're dealing with a spirit that this land was founded on. Mm. And this spirit, what it gets you to do, it intimidates you to speak out against it. Give you Because our job as believers is to what? Expose darkness. Mm. So every spirit don't want to be identified. It wants you to stay in your ignorance so it can rule over you and not think it's a spirit. Mm -hmm. What's the main thing about racism? It wants us to believe that it's not here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it hits you on a daily basis. Places that you go, not even realizing it. Stuff that you're watching on TV is hitting you. Now, it then got so bad now that even if you begin to say stuff on that level, you'll be identified as a black nationalist. Why? Because black nationalists have a stigma of just being militant. Mm -hmm. So if you bring in an awakening or even a movement like we are bringing, you would still be identified. Why? Because you're only somewhat there hearing that you're only dealing with your people. Now, the Jewish people, ever since we've known them, who who, who they only dealt with? Who they only lifted up? Who was they ministry to? Did we have a problem with that? Now, if the Jewish people was getting bombed in Israel, would anybody say? Now think about what preachers have said. We got to go stand with Israel. They're who? God's chosen people. Now take Israel from over there. Bring them to America. Let them experience the stuff that we experience based off their ethnicity. Well, we say, I ain't getting involved in no race war. Why? We wouldn't say that because we look at them as God's chosen people. So we got to get involved with what they're going through. Because we as Christians were supposed to cling to the children of God. According to how we are taught. Race wouldn't come up at all. They're getting killed. They're getting beat. These are the children of God. Just like it was in the days of Egypt. We got to be the Moses that stand up and stand in the gap. (laughs) When race would never come up. Saying I don't want to get involved in that. You would get involved because you basing their status on them being the children of God and what's prophesied about them. Every preacher will be preaching against racism then. 
Because every preacher was preaching that what they was going through, even when they was in that war in 1967, they was preaching that we got to stand with them. Based off them being the people. Mm -hmm. Look how, how you hate it. It takes no evidence to prove that they are the children. We just believed it. We was like, yep. Y'all got to be the people. I done seen movies, <laughs> coloring books, <laughs> books, and y'all said they brought no evidence. That's true. That's true. So we go from Genesis to Revelation. I got y'all almost four pages of scriptures proving who we are. And people still doubt and give us a hard time yeah. when everything identifies us. But you bring them over here. I say, I ain't getting involved in that. Mm -mm. When no preachers say that every preach, and if you say my ministry now is to awaken the Jewish people and give them the reality of the Messiah, bring them into the right covenant. That's my ministry. Everybody be like, oh, great job, yeah. What you need for us to support you, we give you anything. Because we need them to turn around according to prophecy. It says they'll wake up and receive Jesus and come out of that. So whatever you need, man of God, we're going to give it to you. Based off them, off their ethnicity now. Now when you show that they ain't the people and show that y'all the people, uh-uh. That's racism right there. You mean to tell me you finna go off one particular people and leave everybody else out? You ain't thought about that when you thought that was the Jewish people. But when it comes to you, no. Race start come, coming in. Why is that? Why is that? What, what, what is that? in this land, that if you try to do it, I can say a thing like, look, and I'm going to get into why I'm saying this. I can say a thing like, look, we need to get into, watch this now, watch how we hear this, segregated group economics. If I just say that, we need to start practicing and, and, and get into segregated group economics. People will be like, segregation. Right. No, we don't need a second grade. We need to all be together. We need to all be one. We are one body in the USA. Right? right? But every nationality practice just about group economics but us. The Jewish dollar passed through their uh, nationality 11 times. No, 16 times before it leave out of their community. That's amazing. It is. That means I'm not going to support no other business. I'm going to base my business practices off my brothers. And it's going to keep circulating within our community before it goes out our community. Same thing with the Europeans. Same thing even with the Mexicans. The Mexicans will get one house. 17 people stay in that one house. And support their own group. Same thing with the Arabs. But if you say you're going to do that. Oh, that's racism right there. Mm -hmm. Y'all racist. You know that. So, what I'm trying to get us to see is... Look at racism as a spirit that must be identified. Now, I cannot say we need to all come together right now. I can't say that. Hey, sis, chill on how you doing? You can come sit anywhere. I cannot say that we need to all come together now. Because with the things that just transpired, If my family, if I'm having problems in my family home, and within my home, I'm having problems, rest of the neighborhood see it, why would I go out and trying to bring everybody into what I'm doing in my house? 
like their opinion would be valid. Should I bring all my neighbors and everybody in the neighborhood to fix what's going on in my family rather than dealing with my family themselves? So it's a problem because of who you are. That if the same thing, like I said before, was going on with the Jewish people, you take us out of here and put the Jewish people right here and have them deal with what we deal with, nobody would ever bring up race. Everybody would say, we must be on their side because they are the children of God. Color when 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 matter, period. So why, when it comes down to this, that we are so afraid to speak up against racism? People have to say, that, got, that must be your calling. You must be called to speak up against a spirit. Mm. And everybody else, you speak up against abortion, you speak up against homosexuality, they ain't got to be your calling to speak up against that. They ain't got to be your purpose then. But when it comes to this spirit that its inception was birthed in America, everybody want to be quiet. Shh, don't say nothing. Just go pray a little bit. We pray, shout round the church, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, and then quiet down to the next thing. Mm, that's yeah. true, man. Shout music, run around the church. Glory! We got to pray. We got to pray because the devil. And then we die down. So why is it a problem for preachers to speak on everything else but this main demon that's prevalent that don't want to be identified, that want to intimidate you and keep your mouth closed and not identify, but he... He, he, he structure your life on a daily basis. Right, right. But we're scared to identify who he is. Because mm -hmm. the only way a demon can be cast out or brought down, even its system, mm -hmm. is through exposure. That's true. Now, don't say we need to get with everybody because right now we don't. Because everybody can't see it. If you're not a part of this struggle, why are you talking on it? If you ain't experienced walking around with this, why are you talking on it? In this land, this is one of the only places where somebody that never experienced a struggle can tell you how to deal with the struggle. Now, we take what's going on and what happened, right? This is something that's been happening in waves. Yeah. It happened, spark everybody, dies down. Yeah. Happened, spark everybody. Now, look how, how the media covers it. It'll spark it, then it'll allow it to die out when it's concerning you. Now, it's certain things they want to stay at the forefront of your mind when it concerns others. Think about O.J. OJ Simpson. That happened 20 years ago. Did they ever let that die out? 20 years, you, you got a documentary going on about this now. He keep coming up because they want to keep in people's mind this man murdered these two people. But Trayvon Munn, they want you to forget that right. like yesterday. Right. Right. Tamir Rice, mm -hmm. young 12-year-old boy, open carry gun state where you can have your gun out. Drives up to him two seconds out after coming out of the car and shoots him down. A 12-year-old boy. They want that to go up and die down. So what is the purpose? What's the point of this? What's going on with this? What do they need to happen? Let me ask you this. Will protesting change anything? No. Is it effective? No. Why wouldn't it be effective? It's just movement, yeah, with no solution. I think it's movement. It's, it's just, you know, words. It's not really a solution in place to fix the problem. It's mm -hmm. just a lot of 
you know, action, yelling and, you know, you, you bring it attention, but it's like not the right attention. You're not really addressing um, what solutions we can have mm-hmm. to the problem. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just a lot of hype for, mm-hmm. for nothing. Exactly. It's like crying. It's like a baby that's crying and you just kind of leave the baby there crying. The baby, you see the baby, but, you know, it's no solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, to me, I think the so-called leaders that we're supposed to have mm. are used to basically pacify us. Mm-hmm. Um, by getting us to march and protest. And they know it's not, and I really, I really think they all work together. I don't know. Mm-hmm. 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 I think it's, um, it's like controlled opposition mm-hmm. in a way. And the only, I think the only way we're going to do it is by using our dollars to boycott the system eventually. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sit for the seat back there. Now, like we were saying, marching and protesting, yes, it shows unity and it shows strength, right? But it's important to understand what makes this system operate and who has the power and spend it. We don't realize how much power we have because we buy, we buy, we spend money on stuff that's just fruitless and ridiculous because we have no identity and because we have no culture. This system can set what's prestigious in our mindset. So it can take something like Louis Vuitton or Gucci, put it at $600 because we have nothing to identify with, no culture. We look at that as self worth. So we buy that and wear it amongst each other. Right. Spend our dollars on that. Why? For self-worth. Because right. right. now they can set everything and make their empires billions of dollars because you have no self-worth. Mm-hmm. It's clothing. Right. But I can set it at $600. A $600 purse. Because you have no self-worth. You have no culture. You have no identity. So I can allow your ignorance to make me rich. Yes, now take one of the African tribes that has culture. They'll look at that person and be like, I don't get self-worth and material. Mm-hmm. That's why they can sow their own stuff and do their own thing. And they don't have to look immaculate because they don't value things. Mm-hmm. They value as family. Mm-hmm. So they invest their time in that. They have a culture, so they don't look at you. Can't set what's prestigious to them. But us. But the only way that a statement can be made is you start dealing with the money. Group economics. Now that ain't Jesus. That ain't spiritual. That ain't God. You talking about y'all getting together and meeting? <laughs> Why we can't come to the meeting? No, no, no. We don't need you right now. Why? Because you don't experience or believe the problem of racism. You in denial. So why would I invite you to something that I'm going to struggle with you about? Mm-hmm. And you haven't even experienced this, but yet tell me I just need to get over it. Mm-hmm. It would be blasphemy to go for me to go into Israel with the Jewish people and tell them to get over the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. Be blasphemy to go into these Indian lands and tell them y'all need to get over what Christopher Columbus did to y'all. Mm-hmm. But anybody can look at your struggle and say, right. get over it. Right. Even though yours yeah. was the worst that this land ever yeah. this this earth ever spends, even according to scripture. Scripture, Daniel 9. Mm-hmm. They tell you to get over it because they don't think you... This land shows you you're not worth anything to them. Now, we listen at this and be like, well, no, that, that man, he finna go off. Because he's, he's trying to get us stirred up. He ain't talking nothing spiritual. What did the Most High first tell the children of Israel? He segregated. 
why he did that? Because they had Egypt in them. Mm. And he couldn't have Egypt influences trying to bring them into a kingdom. Right. So if you got the detox, I can't let you be influenced by what you came out of. So now, what can make more of a statement than any march? What was Martin Luther King a master of? Boycotts. Mm -hmm. That ain't. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> he, was. he shook. The, them sit-ins ain't shaped the nation as much as them boycotts mm -hmm. did America. But you start dealing with that money. Yeah. And when they start refusing to get on their bus, that bus system went down. Yeah. Think about people like LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Billions of dollars. Stephen mm -hmm. Curry. That one of them stand up and say, I ain't playing another game till y'all get this right in my city. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody on that scale. Now, us low level, we can do the best we can. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, we say, well, we ain't going to Dillard's. You know what I'm saying? We go to city trends. <laughs> but now it's time to unite and see what we can do. Being led. Because what prayer's supposed to do is give you instructions. You're supposed to just pray and do all the talking because you ain't praying. So if anybody tell me just to pray but they ain't came out with no instructions, what are you telling me? Because the spirit of the Most High leads and guides us into all truth. And a lot of times we don't understand different things or ain't touched with it because it ain't hit home. But the Most High don't look at individuals. He look at nation. So what am I doing myself that can affect the nation as a whole? What's my part? What can I do? What can I develop? First, I got to realize, okay, it's racism here. Mm -hmm. I got to teach my kids. It's racism here. Worst thing to go out there and be surprised that you can't get a job because you're black. You got better qualifications and everything, but you never taught your children about this system. You just told them, mm -hmm. all you got to do is just believe in God and Jesus. Mm -hmm. But never discern what's going on. So they can see what problems they'll deal with. Then they can trust and put their faith in the Most High to see them through it anyway. Right. Rather than tell them that you don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Why would I need? Because to me, all of a sudden, and, and we still just open discussion. I'm going to get back in the scriptures in a minute. But all of a sudden. It then got out of hand with police excessive force. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was a time that it wasn't as extreme or as bad. But now it's like these police got some of them. I ain't saying all. Right. There are all good cops out there. And that's a dangerous job. That's a rough job. Because you got to go deal with people that's ignorant, that's acting up, that's going to do some crazy stuff. That's the truth. But you're supposed to be well trained. Mm -hmm. Some of these cops out like they got their... Um, license from Kroger or McDonald's that the first thing they think to do is pop I mean what 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 else can you do now if 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 you tell me to go and get my license and registration and I go to do that I'm letting you know I got a gun in here and I'm licensed to carry it and you tell me to get my license and registration and I reach for it and you shoot me four times at point blank range. I did everything right this time. Everything. But then, now we got to argue about does black lives matter or does all lives matter? <laughs> See, that's one thing that aggravate me. I'm going to watch this. Watch this now. One thing about the black man Ever since our inception here, we want to believe all lives matter. I believe it. I just do. I want to believe it. But ever since our ancestors been here, 
We've been showed that they don't. Right. That our lives don't matter. Our ancestors got here, they raped them, beat them, killed them, uh, uh, destroyed them, burned them, set them on fire, did all those things. Then we got emancipated. We free now, boss. We free. What we get for freedom? Black codes. Jim Crow. KKK. I still got the problem. Come out of that police brutality. I still got to prove my life matters. Now, if all lives matter, show me somebody else that's struggling to live. Mm -hmm. Come on. I understand all lives matter. But we, the subject matter is black lives matter. Because black lives are what? Can kill. I'm going to deal with some things in a minute. Now, we can walk around and say, have cancer awareness, but breast cancer awareness. Breast cancer. We're going to key in on breast cancer. Don't nobody bring up all cancer matter. <laughs> Why we just want to lung cancer matter? Colon cancer? Right. The subject matter is breast cancer. Yeah. HIV awareness. We're going to key in on that. No, sir. You can't just talk about AIDS. It's other diseases that matter. <laughs> but we're focusing in on AIDS. <laughs> then watch the deflection. Watch the deflection. They deflect by saying black on black crime. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we just quit killing each other. And black lives need the matter to y'all. Really? Okay, let's see something. You want to go off statistics? Okay. Every nationality is going to have high statistics within their own nationality. Mm -hmm. Because they're within each other. So the problem's going to be with each other. So the rate's going to be high with each other. But watch this. White on white crime is the highest, the highest. rate in this nation. Mm. Look it up. White on white crime. Mm -hmm. But yours is propagated on TV. Right. Through the movies. Mm -hmm. It gets you to believe this is the only problem that's going on with this nation. That's why they can't get together. Because black on black crime. Now, granted, we are the only ones that listen to music that talks about the mean and ourselves. Call our women bees, call our women hoes, call our brothers niggas, and want to kill each other. And we think that's music. Now, that's a problem. But I can show you how that's been set up also, too. So, well, another thing, every time you see a video, statistically, it says that white people get killed more by cops on own. Really? Show me a few videos. I can't find them. Now, I tell you, I was using a slew of Slew of <laughs> You just get tired of watching it because it's just every day, all the time. It don't, I'm telling you. But you see him point blanking at a cop and they miss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All that, yeah. Now, <laughs> exactly. Now, that, that'll happen. And they say, well, they shouldn't have been resisting. What's that resisting? Number one, well, let me do, let me do this. Resisting, okay. You mean tell me. First of all, Every right I had, you just violated. Let me show you what, what, what's going on, what's really going on. I want to instill, how many of us now feel a little nervous when um, a cop may pull us over? Raise your hand. <laughs> was that by design? Okay. If I show you excessive force to put fear in you, you'll give up your liberty to keep your life. 
So you would accept new things that come in by your consent because you're afraid. Why should you? Mm-hmm. So now police officers got to use excessive force. No, you got rights. Yes, you got the right to remain silent. You got the right to remain silent. They can't just go in your car and just grab stuff out of there. They got to ask you. It's on the books. They got to ask you, can I search your car? Can I search your person? But they just do it because we don't look at that. Now, we'll say, Why you, won't you just comply, 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 comply now? It's by design. Because now you need to think about rights, period. I just want to save my life. So now, because of fear, I'm going to do everything they need me to do. Throw my rights out the window. Because I'm going to trade my liberty for security. So I can keep excessively showing you that. And you won't think about a right that you have in this land. All you think about is trying to save your life. Okay, what's the next step from that? Okay, now they're going to get upset. They're going to have marches. And now we're going to set somebody up. That's why I tell you, be careful going in the marches because we're going to set somebody up to shoot police officers. Not them. Right. But have somebody to set up. Why? Because with Black Lives Matter or black people, I want to put a terrorist stigma to them. Mm -hmm. So now if you show up at these meetings, you're meeting. They can say this meeting. Here's a terrorist meeting. Mm -hmm. Because you're meeting against stuff we set up. So if I plant somebody to shoot police at your at your meeting, or if I encourage you to come out and it get crazy, I have somebody that's look like y'all that come in there and just start looting stores and do all kind of crazy stuff. Now I got to bring the police in and start shooting. Mm-hmm. Now every time y'all get together, it's something malicious. I want that stigma on y'all. And now you start shooting police. Watch this now. Now, that's wrong, but you start shooting police. And now it might be a campaign that come out and say police lives matter. Blue lives matter. Blue li- Watch this. Don't nobody say all lives matter to that. <laughs> What's the difference? The blue lives. No, we can't just be concerned about the police. Because all lives matter. But when it comes to you. They want you the perception of you to feel like you are nothing. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna deflect every time y'all try to have any self worth. Gonna throw a deflection in there. People gonna regurgitate it. Mm-hmm. All I'm trying to do is wake you up to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. So now, if I have you afraid to just comply, 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 because everybody's screaming comply, and we, hey, hey, hey you got if you want to live <laughs> right now, you better comply. Or you can end up dead, but that's by design. So now I'm thinking about comply. And now it begins to be a race war and a war against police now. Well, police are getting shot, right? So what's the next step? You're already used to complying, but the next step is martial law. I got to bring the military in. I got to bring foreign nations, the United Nations. Now we look at all these trucks going down the road with all these tanks and stuff that say you in on it. These FEMA camps, what is that for? Oh, don't worry about it. We just keep partying. Right. We just keep dancing. Right. Or we'll keep church. And they set this thing up around us. Because once they start hitting them police and we say we can't trust the police no more, we got to take it to another level. Oh, yeah. Now it's chaos because the police scared, the citizens scared. So now we got the brain martial law in. You already used to comply now with martial law. You ain't got nothing. I can come to your house and raid everything. I don't care what you got stored up. I'm saving up for the end times. Perishable things. I got all kind of water. I got all that saved up in my safe. Martial law hit. Uh-uh. Come here. Give me all that. I want all that. You got guns. How many you got? I got to have all of them. Oh, you think you're going you gonna to fight me? You skilled? You finna go against a Marine? You skilled in shooting just because you shot a few deers? You think you can handle a troop that this all they do is train for? So if I get you afraid initially by excessive force, then I can get ready to start implementing martial law. Get white and black against each other. Get the police against that and cause chaos. 
get y'all to marching, do all kind of crazy stuff at the marching, cause chaos. Because I need chaos to implement the new order. And you will receive the new order with compliance. Give up your liberty of security. When martial law hit, they control all railroads, they control cars, they control food, they control your job. Mm -hmm. They control everything. Mm -hmm. And now what can be implemented is the mark of the beast. Because you won't be able to buy and sell mm -hmm. unless you take on our mark. So who's going to get us out? The most high, that's it. There's no, no way out. And there you go. Because I look at it, it's important to see that that's what I look at. That, that, that we're going to need uh, uh, S plus. Like the scripture says, those that know their God mm -hmm. will be strong and do S plus. But you got to know him. That's right. You got to know him. You got to know him. You got to know who you are. You got to know what kind of power your history dealt with. To give you faith for right now, because right now it look like we need the apostles now. The stuff they walked in, being able to walk by somebody and the stuff that Elijah did. We need them in this day. But it's something he's saving for us, because we're going to need S for us. We ain't going to be able to hide and have meetings like the apostles did. They got technology that they can be thousand miles away and tell each one of us body temperature in here. Everything's mm -hmm. set up. You ain't hiding nowhere. So it's going to take the most high. But we got, but the only way, because he know his, his people, according to scripture, he know we're stiff necked, hard headed. When you look in the scripture, all you got to do is look at the nations of people. You'll be able to tell who we talking about. <laughs> Ain't nobody more rebellious than us. <laughs> Ain't nobody more stiff necked than us as a nation. Now, ain't nobody more spiritual than us. Ain't nobody more gifted than us neither. That's right. But the most high know that the only thing that brings us together is persecution. When that happens, persecution start hitting, we throw away our differences and start to unite. So he has to have these things. We're going to see some more killings. Because now this last killing, it woke everybody up. I'm talking about everybody was talking about this now. Like, man, it's getting crazy. It's getting real crazy. Everybody start talking. So the more and more things are allowed to happen, because we are in the land of what? I'm going to say it again. We are in the land of what? How we know that? According to what? There you go. It says where we'll be in the land of our captivity. So, do we think when the Most High brought the Israelites out of Egypt and freed them that he could allow them to stay in Egypt? He had to do what? Take them out so they can experience what freedom really is. And not only that, so they can experience salvation. Salvation is totally different than what we it's not just a spiritual awakening that we think it is. It's the difference between the born again experience and what true salvation is. Born experience deals with sanctification, renewal of your mind, heart, spirit, aligning it with the most high. It's been born of his spirit. Where you functioning in the graces and in the fruits of the most high and in the gifts of the most high. But when it comes to what salvation is, that deals with rulership, that deals with power, and that deals with deliverance. Y'all ready? Let's go into something. Well, anybody else got um, any things that they want to add or that they want to say to that? I just think it's, it's crazy because the things that are going on right now, you know, in freedom um, with Police, police brutality, and you see that they're trying to start a police war against, you know, the citizens and the police and a race war. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing my husband is experiencing right now, and it has been for the past two, two and a half weeks in jail. Mm -hmm. The Aryans mm -hmm. are at war 
with um, one of the other gangs, mm. basically. And he had been, they've been on lockdown for like two and a half weeks now. Mm -hmm. So when I was telling him what was happening about the shooting, and they, they don't have TV, um, so they can't see the TV or anything like that. And I was just saying, I'm like, well, it's a good thing that y'all can't see the TV. I said, because this, this, and this has happened here. Mm -hmm. And he was like, wow. He was like, they are, that's, that's who's fighting now. Mm -hmm. He said, the Aryans are, are fighting against, and he named, you know, the gang. And I was like, and he said, yeah. He said, they told us that they were trying to get the governor to make a statement or something to try to, the governor's trying to negotiate with them to, you know, draw hands mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm like, he said, but we don't really know if that's really happening or if that's just something that they told you. Mm -hmm. You know, and so to, to think that this has been going on for over two and a half weeks for him, and then now it's it's happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's parallel. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know. Let you know it's a, it's a spiritual thing that's happening. Right. But one great thing is most High getting us ready for um, his regathering. And it's going to come through, like Jeremiah 30 says, uh, with Jacob's trouble that we um, are going to be experiencing to unite us and get us together and get us prepared. And that's what he was looking Because when you look at the children of Israel also in Egypt, that the closer they got to the Most High getting uh, Moses prepared to come bring deliverance, the bondage and the persecution got harder but it just united them together and got it prepared for the deliverance so i think that's what the most high is doing because we got all these ideologies all these different things everybody believing but um all he's trying to do is he's gonna let you see all these other guys out here gonna fail oh, yeah. when it start getting real hard and stuff got to start getting crazy and these people start calling on, because we believe in all kind of stuff. These people start calling on all these gods and ain't nothing happening. He wants all your faith and confidence out of that. Oh, yes. Yes. So when he come up in there with signs and wonders, we're going to know who the true God is. Okay. Go ahead, bro. Uh-oh. And that's the important thing you say. Prayer. Yes, sir. I was just in prayer the other day, and God was kind of telling people. You know, it's a serious, it's a serious thing to tell a sinner that they should pray, uh, because that that makes them feel like they're in a place where they can reach God. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm quoting the scripture because the Bible says, "If any man be a worshiper of God, he shall be real and he hears." Mm -hmm. And Brother Derek turned me to a scripture where he blew my mind. I think it was a Proverbs 28:9. He says that the uh, Reject God's law, reject hearing God's law. Yes, sir. Your Even your prayer. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, you know what? That's something. Yeah, and then so you got to, I think of it in the way God uh, gave it to the most high gave it to me. It's a parable for the rest. Uh, nobody has any right to have intimacy with the other sex or other mm. I mean, it, it just good. makes sense. You, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen without that commitment to you where I can demand and ask things of you. It, it just doesn't make sense once you once you put it together in the natural. So us having this right, um, you know, we should really just look at it as being grateful, so grateful that we get this opportunity to be enlightened, to have our eyes open, to have that relationship back with the Father. That it should drive us back in the prayer. I'm talking about myself too. Yeah. Amen. Drive yeah. us back yeah. in the prayer even more yeah. to be able to fellowship with the whole thing. That's right. Prayer and, and meditation. So meditation and learning how to meditate and allowing that word to just just hear sometimes i just play it the word on my right. computer and i just cut the lights off and just not say nothing i'm just listening to the word and that thing get in letting it meditate meditating on it. letting the most high talk to my spirit concerning it you'll be surprised what the most high give you that's why you should always take your a pen and a paper in there allow him to speak to you according to his scriptures now you know, you get the not dealing with the scriptures and think you talking to him, you might be here. You know, <laughs> who you talking to? This is right here going to keep you stable. But let me read this right here. Um, and this is going to kind of go with what we're going with. And then we're going to hit this um, salvation and we'll be done. It says, Behold, uh, Isaiah, I mean, Isaiah 59. And this is, um, this is talking to us. 
I'm going to go ahead and start reading. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it can't save. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. Watch this, Israel. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he would not hear. For your hands are defiled. Think about the nation as a whole, not just yourself. Let's read this again. And ain't that his hand too short now. You see what's going on. But I'm going to let Israel know what's going on with them. It's your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have I hid my face from you that I would not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity and your lips have spoken lies and your tongue have muttered perverseness. None call it for justice nor any pleader for truth. They trust in vanity, speak lies, they can see mischief and bring iniquity. They hatch contrite eggs and weave the spider web. He that eat of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. They web shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are the works of iniquity, the act of violence is in their hand. They think run to evil, they make haste to shed blood, innocent blood. Their thoughts are Thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their past. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know. Therefore, watch this. Justice is far from us. Judgment is far from us. Neither do justice overtake us. We wait for life. But behold, obscurity. Are we not doing that? Yeah. For brightness, something has got to happen. But we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like a blind man. We grope as if we have no eyes. We stumble at the new day and night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar like that and say, this ain't right. And mourn, crying about these things. We look for judgment. We look for judgment for this judicial system to convict somebody. We looking for it. But there is none for salvation. But it is for all from us. Somebody come save us out of here. Mm -mm. For all from us. Watch this. It'll make you look at yourself. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Our sins testify against us, for our transgressions are with us, and for our iniquities we know them. In transgressions and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from our heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backwards, and justice stand afar off. For truth is fallen in the streets, and equity cannot enter. Yeah, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil, making himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and was displeased that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, wondered that there was no intercessor. Wow. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. So he stopped worrying about the intercessor. God said, I'm just going to do this myself. Mm -hmm. For he put on righteousness as the breastplate, and the heaven of salvation upon his head, and put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad in zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, till the islands he will repay recompense. recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. <laughs> from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them shall turn from transgression. And Jacob said, the Lord. As for me, watch this, this is the reason he's doing it. It ain't just based off you. This is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seeds, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forevermore. His word is still in our mouth. We are the seeds that it's talking about. Now, I'm just going to be able to go to one scripture because we almost at 2.30. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 
and stay to my word. All right, let's go to uh, Luke, and this is this will show us. Because a lot of us already heard how um, you heard you hear that a lot of how Brother uh, Tyrus broke down what salvation is according to Romans eleven. Pretty much heard that. All right, so let's let's testify to that. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 64. Let's start at verse 63. Brother Dave, read that for me. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 63. And he asked for the writing table, and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. Now, we're talking about uh, John's uh, father, Zechariah. You know, his mouth got closed up. Um, at that point, uh, when he was going to reveal what his name was, uh, Most High opened his mouth up. So let's keep reading. Verse 64. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noised abroad, abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard him, heard them, laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Mm -hmm. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant. So we're talking about salvation, verse 7. As he spake by the, by the mouth of his holy prophets, which had been since the world began, mm -hmm. that we should be saved. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He spoke of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we shall be saved from our enemies. Keep going. And from the hand of all that hate us. So, one aspect of natural salvation is being saved from your enemies and all them that do what? Hate you. Keep going. To perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. So the mercy that is formed that was promised to our fathers deals with the land, us returning to the land. And just like he scattered us that he was going to regather us and i give you all the scriptures on that regather us and he talks about the thing that is going to be going on in the land how beautiful it's going to be keep going that he would grant unto oh. yeah read seven two again to perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which the, which he swore to our father abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemy might serve him without fear. Another aspect of salvation, being taken away from those that hate you and be able to serve the Most High without fear. Are we serving him with somewhat fear in this land now? Yeah. Yeah. Being able to serve him without fear, not having to worry about all these crazy things. I have to worry about it, even when you give them the job in order to bless the most high work. That I ain't got to worry about. I might not get the job because of my skin color. I ain't got to worry about being into into jobs and getting looked over and getting done wrong because I'm black. Well, I got to try to prove myself to somebody. Keep going. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us. So the only way to receive this salvation is through what? Remission of what? Sins. So you ain't just going to walk into that promised land. You ain't just going to walk in there just on the basis that you're Israel. Mm -mm. 
So being able to serve the most high without having to be in the land got to deal with all these other holidays that's out here right now. And looking looking bad because you choose not to serve that. You ain't got to worry about that no more. You ain't got to worry about all these different denominations because it'll be one God that's set up in one place. So all this fear, and you got to realize what this means. This why at first our forefathers was looking at uh, Jesus or Yahushua different because it was like you're supposed to come bring salvation now, not what you initially bought the remissions of our sins. We're looking to get out of Rome and go back to the land of Israel and have the kingdom again. You see what I'm saying? So natural salvation. Is being able to serve the Most High in our own land, with our own wealth, with everything that was promised to us without having fear, taking us away from the presence of sin, period, where sin won't even be on the animals no more, according to Isaiah 11. Peace will hit the land again, being able to serve him. And everybody greeting each other won't be hello, but it'll be shalom. Everything could be back to that Sabbath rest that the Most High set up from the beginning. The presence and the power of the natural salvation that's coming through the remission of sin that was promised to the Father. That makes sense? Oh, yes. All right. Well, if anybody. Ooh. All right. We went over. We got. We did, we're still doing this. 228. Anybody got any quick questions? Yeah. Anything on their mind? Go ahead. With, with, with everything that's going on, right? Mm -hmm. And people say, well, what can we do or how mm -hmm. should we handle it? Mm -hmm. If these things are supposed to happen, mm -hmm. then are we, are we supposed to be trying to do something? Yeah. It's like this. We are supposed to be led by scripture. Yeah. And it's a scripture tell us to gather together, a yeah. nation that's not desired. We're supposed to be gathering and allowing the Most High to give us wisdom and an instruction. Because it would be the same way as saying that, okay. Nation no, no, I'm sorry. I got you on that. Okay. I'm saying like with everybody else, like outside. Everybody else outside? Like the people that are not of God, they saying we should come together and do this or do that. Should we be trying to do that? No, nah, the people that ain't of ain't of God. No, nah. that's what I'm saying. No, nah, if if you they say like nobody's trying to do anything. Well, we're not supposed to be trying to do it. I mean, like we're doing right now. Mm. This is what I call doing something. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you get if some people talking about like it depends on what you mean doing. Now, if you talking about gathering together, let's get some wisdom. Let's strategize. Let's find out what we're trying to do. You just talking about doing something like let's go get some guns, let's go bust some heads, <laughs> stuff like that. Now I'm not against not having protection because I think you need some natural protection and some spiritual protection. And it's scripture. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, well, let me take back on what I I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. Because I'm saying, but it's kind of piggyback with what I think you're saying. What I'm thinking about when you talk about getting together and other people, you know, they don't just know if they don't, you know, understand mm -hmm. this. But on the contrary, um, that's good mm -hmm. for a certain extent because mm -hmm. COINTEL PRO is still indeed at its highest elevation. You're right. And they You're use right. our own people. Right. Like I said, that was my family before that happened to. Mm -hmm. So the people that were used to sabotage these things, mm -hmm. they were people from outside. That was our skin color. Mm -hmm. That were paid to do these things mm -hmm. to set them off. So Okay. We can't, you know what I'm saying, we can't be like, have, you know, come together and unite with all black people. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. all black people are not of the most high. That's right. And there are most, everybody has this, like, um, just like what you were saying, you know, many are called, few are very much chosen. Mm -hmm. So some people are unable to let go of their own desire. Mm -hmm. So when we do gather together, because mm -hmm. one thing that we also have to understand is Facebook is a lockable tool. This Facebook is also a tool against us because the enemy still watch as far as hearing everything we're saying mm -hmm. and we're, we're temper tantrum right now but it's cool because mm -hmm. you're telling it everywhere oh well let's go have a group meeting like that can't be seen <laughs> so you know <laughs> it's kind of like the we have to go back just like Jeremiah says to our old ways mm -hmm. we 
did things secretly. And we were on even when we were here and on this plantation, you know, the technology wasn't there. Everybody said technology was a new thing. That's actually not. Mm-hmm. It's just big brother times one million. So yeah, you're right. understanding the spirit of where each and every one of us are, there are some that is ready to just go and be like, yo, we're going to mm-hmm. be like Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman had to shoot a few of our people because mm-hmm. they couldn't shut their mouth or they went crying to master. Mm-hmm. So that's where when we gather and what we actually really do need to do, yes, we gather and meet, but except, you know, we can't tell everybody that, mm-hmm. that looks like us mm-hmm. what what's up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have to be, that's where the beauty of the spirit of the most high is, mm-hmm. you know, if this one, you know, if you're a little hasty and say, you know what, but that's my favorite cookie. Well, cookie got to go too. <laughs> you're right though you know what I'm you're right, so you're it's right. Just like the ability to let go mm-hmm. like you understand why I'm actually here in the city right now mm-hmm. because my brother died mm-hmm. so there is a, a testimony within this that says oh we all want you here mm-hmm. but you see you all are not mm-hmm. as strong and as not wavering because now right now you want to gather for my brother among people that is not my sin Mm-hmm. And these people add me, but I am still the same person. I'm gonna post the same thing, mm-hmm. whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. So I have to make a big decision on whether do I sacrifice? Am I doing this for the most high? But if I be in a house that is full of confusion and is not comprehending and is is overusing the most high in their own Greek minded yeah. way, we are a problem because mm-hmm. I'm gonna be an issue. Mm-hmm. Because and then once you do that, imagine all the people that you're running in your home. Mm-hmm. Imagine what you're allowing to be seen. Mm-hmm. So if we're telling the secrets of what we're trying to do, we'll never grow. Mm-hmm. So segregation is indeed, but we got to cut the ties of our people who are not trying to hear us. Mm-hmm. Because our own people are the same ones. Oh my gosh, Dallas Cox died. All lives matter. Shut mm-hmm. up. <laughs> because you can't see the, old, the whole the scheme. Year. Yeah. So what they're they're blind still. The veil has not been removed. Mm-hmm. And the most high, the one that we serve, mm-hmm. they don't want it. Mm-hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's where the the our leaders mm-hmm. will be understood of cool is cool mm-hmm. and just rock out now. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, when that's you know just point. being careful, um, even with our yeah. <laughs> that, that's a great point. That's a great point. That that's that's what discernment. It's going to be taken in and um, flowing in the gifts of the spirit. Because we got to get to the point where the most high can show us people heart. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I ain't even going to spend time with you. See what I'm saying? Showing us people heart to see where you're exactly at. You know, mm-hmm. and being able to, because that's what he said. He said, Yahushua said, he's coming to bring us forward. Mm-hmm. So it ain't going to be family ties in that type of sense. And we got to be okay with that. You know what I'm saying? So we just have to keep flowing, but that is where it's important to develop those spiritual gifts. Prophet, flowing in the prophetic is not about giving you houses and, and cars and all that type of stuff. We need, okay, where we need to go. <laughs> where, we, where we need to stay in this area. You see what I'm saying? So that is why, because that's a good point. That COINTEL is, is terrible and everything that we didn't start it. No, we got it. But after a while, we just want to trust the Most High, and He's going to give us the wisdom and lead us, guide us to tall truth and what to do. Okay, so um, I try to promise to leave it to stop at two thirty, um, and we're done. Um, I'm going. This is what I plan on doing the next week. Um, to have um, and this will be on that Sunday. I'm gonna reach out to the community and see who wanna talk about this circumstance situation going on. That's all. I ain't nothing but my way to reel them in because everybody heart open now. Everybody knows something going on. So I'm going to let them come in, give them a few standards and guidelines with your talking. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? But we're, <laughs> we're going to, you know, you know, eventually give them the word. But um, what we plan on doing is, like I said, these things will be set up. We're learning the language. And that's why it's important to learn, like we're doing, learn the language together, and it's important to have our own communication where everybody don't know. Yeah. You go into some Hebrew, and they be like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Um, when y'all talk about the forecast and all that stuff, and I was just and I was like, "We have, we decided to go." Okay. And um, be just be we, careful. Yeah, but we went for the end part of it when they were just talking. Hmm. And so, but it was something that. What, what was it that we heard was that someone actually stood up 
and said, uh, y'all want to know the, the, the truth? And, you know, people was like, yeah, tell us the truth. And God said, the truth is, is that we are the children of God. We are the true people mm. of Israel. Mm. Wow. And Say that down there. And he said that as boldly, he said, we are the Hebrewites. We are mm -hmm. the chosen people. Mm -hmm. And then he started, you know, saying what y'all, what they should be not doing. Exactly. Know, like I mean, it's. And then it was so amazing because then other people, they stood around and they said, well, when can we meet? When can we talk more about mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's it. That that's it. Like, but most high work going on, just so because it might not look like it's going on as fast in your perspective yeah, area, don't mean that it ain't swarming around the earth. Yeah. You know, so it, it is happening. But um, we're going to do that. And like I said, it'll be uh, segmented as when we come here, we'll learn something about the culture initially, like we talked about what's the importance of um, not praying towards the east, but praying towards the land and the mm -hmm. spiritual applications of that and the faith of that. And then we'll go right into the language, um, understanding that, learning that, and then we'll go right into um, the teaching after that. Um, I'm starting to, um, instead of every time we meet, have a teach se session, in a sense where I'm teaching, um, I want to open up those fourth Sundays. Um, it might be something um, that I want to start called um, Saving Our People or um, something like that, where We'll, be, we'll begin to watch documentaries that will give us an understanding of where, where we're at today, uh, even stuff to show you how to break down movies and understand what the message is really saying. So you'll be able to see what you're watching or understand, like, the um, what's the sister name with the blue eye, brown eye um, experiment, James yeah. Elliott. Mm -hmm. Be able to watch that type of stuff to let you see why this information is very important to learn. And it gives you more of an understanding of what to teach your children so they won't grow up thinking that they have this ill effect and nappy and they don't embrace that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't embrace their dark skin. And we're going to give this spiritual application to why our hair is the way it is. And spiritual spiritual applications to melanin. Oh, you didn't hear some of that before. I'm talking about the spiritual aspect. Oh, but no, she's doing good. He's doing good, because that's how you're supposed to do. We have new people. Everybody like they hear, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking it up. That's beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's my sister, y'all. I can mess with her. All right, so we're going to get ready to um to um to close out. Um, Anybody got any questions, comments, or concerns? I just want to say, don't allow what is transpiring going on now to implant fear. Yeah, that's you know right. I mean? yeah, that's right. That's the thing in the spirit that you have to fight yeah. against yeah. is fear. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us to fear no man. That's but right. God, and it's like when you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, he gives you such a boldness mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter what man can do to this body. He cannot do it to your soul. Mm -hmm. And so the main thing is when everything is said and done with, how have you conditioned your soul for eternity? That's good. That's right. That is the main key that we have to continue to stay focused and cognizant of because mm -hmm. it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy. It is really, really crazy. But I just want everybody to just know in whom we believe. Mm -hmm. Don't be shaken. Continue to get truth like my brother has been and as so many other ones are coming in too. But don't let it make you down and don't let it make you no know, punk. <laughs> 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 if you pray, he gives you instruction. That's right. Because I'm telling you, I was, I was, my spirit was so green. Yeah. And I came true. home Wednesday night and heard what happened. And you know, it comes to a point where you don't know what to pray. Yeah. Because you just, you see so much of this going on. Yeah. Like, God, what, what, what to do, God? What, yeah. Where are we supposed to go? Yeah. Give instruction. Yeah. And so that's the thing that I have just been really just basking in is in instruction. I'm not just praying and just, you know, putting it on the back burner <laughs> or, or just praying and just sitting back twiddling in my thumbs waiting for something to happen. Oh, God, what can I do to make a difference? Right. What can you impart into my spirit, man, 
to show yourself and show what you were wanting us to do in such a time as this. That's right. And so that's all I have to say. Thank you, sister. You was the best, man. All right, real quick, let me say this. Um, July the 31st, I've been telling y'all about Divine Prospect. I'm going to bring him down here. But if yeah, <laughs> if anybody want to go, he's doing a lecture in Atlanta. Um, I used to go down there and try to want some money. I got to get down there, uh, get some of them down here. But um, this brother is like, I'm telling you, he's like, the, I mean, he's on a whole nother level when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the knowledge, when it comes to understanding. I mean, uh, but it would be important um, to go and just hear these things and be amongst other people that um, embrace the culture um, in every way. Um, but just let me know that that lecture is going to be July the 31st. So um, in the Ben Atlanta, um, I give you more information on that. Maybe we can trail each other and go down there so they can meet some of the people in Augusta. Also, um, Pastor Ida, All right. he is saying he's leaning towards a conference in August um, in Alabama. That'd be midway point for everybody because, you know, he in Kokomo, Mississippi. Oh. <laughs> so that'd be midway point. Towards the end of the line, he just stays so busy. Uh, but um, he's going to do, uh, it's going to be like how we normally do. Uh, he's going to do all three sessions, though. It'll be a Friday night, Saturday morning. And Saturday uh, evening, man. This way, this brother. It's like when you get on the phone with him. If you need a shot in the arm just to get yourself back focused, that brother there. And he's going to do a call. We're trying to get him to make sure he start doing calls either twice a month or once a month um, on uh, July the 16th. That'll be a Monday evening. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can get him to do it Thursday that week. But um, give us. A, that's a Saturday. Okay, what's that? Uh, what's that Monday leading up to that Saturday? Okay, well that's this Monday. I'll let y'all know for sure. Um, we're gonna get him on a call, and um, he's gonna give us the spiritual application of what's going on. Let the brother be on another level. I'm telling you, conference call. I'll let everybody know. Uh, so you can jump on that call on the 11th or I get back to you within a couple of days, either uh, today or tomorrow. I'm going to try to call them and put that in stone. If not this week, then the next week, we're going to make sure that be in stone. Um, so um, start getting them at least starting off once a month because it'd be wide open. And then uh, at the end of the year, we're still planning to go down now and see um, all the stuff he said. He just, um, you know, finished the other um little water little lake thing he got so he has two fish ponds and he wants us to show us the um 40 acres and vegetation they got going on out there and the, the way they do their electricity i mean his brother he all he just he he ain't playing he all the way off the grid he don't need this system for nothing that's why they be at him a lot but um just wanted to tell you guys that be looking for that i try to post them on that i'm gonna try to get one tonight on the bar and um, give you an official date when we can get them on that conference call and get everybody to jump on and we'll go from there to be recorded and we'll go from there. All right. Well, we're going to get ready to um, conclude. Anybody got any questions, comments, or concerns? Thank you, everybody, for coming out. We had a full house tonight. Good to see everybody. All right. Let's pray out. Father, we give you all the glory on and the praise. That's nothing like you, most high God. We glorify you and honor you. We pray that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge. You will help us understand the route that you will have us to go. Lead us back into the landmark, Father God, that will lead us back unto you. Get your children prepared according to your covenant that you made with our forefathers. We give you the glory and we pull, Father God, on what you have given us. We honor you and give all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your divine protection that you keep over us, for your angels being accounted around about us, keeping us from any hurt, harm, or danger. We pray even in this city and on this earth and in this land that you allow your work to be done. Allow us to be prepared. Lead and guide us into the things that you will have us to do to set our heart and get ourselves ready to do the things that you call us to do according to your purpose. We give you the glory and the honor in the name of your son, Yahushua. Amen. Amen. All right. Love everybody. Thank the young folks for coming today, too.